it has started. Fasten your seatbelts. The hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. Giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakaha Kodash. Double honor to the elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. A sincere Shalom, Labakarium, Shah, Yasha Allah. That's peace to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel who's going to make it out of here because this thing is about to speed up. We only, what, 10, 11 days into January and we coming closer and closer to the edge of World War III and the MOTB and all hell breaking loose. Yesterday evening, the British government finally gave its okay at a cabinet level meeting to attack the Houthi rebels in Yemen. Airstrikes began within hours. Uh, the United States government saying 60 targets were hit within uh, within Yemen. The Yemenis, uh, the Houthis are saying about 70 targets were apparently hit. The United States saying approximately 100 missiles deployed against targets such as uh, command and control nodes, munitions dumps, launching mm. and production pads for missiles, um, production facilities for missiles, and air defense radars. There is confirmation that USS uh, U.S. growlers were uh, in the air, suppressing air defense radar systems, which indicate that there were active radar systems uh, that were trying to target U.S. planes as well as U.K. planes. Reports are that Saudi Arabia did give permission for the United States to use its airspace, and that has a whole bunch of people in the Middle East uh, up in a tizzy. Oman has uh, denounced the U.S. attack on Yemen, which is kind of rich considering uh, Oman has been bombing, been part of the bombing campaign on Yemen for a good number of years. Saudi Arabia also, uh, at the same time, giving its airspace, uh, but then also criticizing the United States, saying that they should be careful and measured in their response. Nutrition and that is goes into, it's like for these commercials right here, discussion of long you know, because these food. nations are phony. You know, so, you know, you got rules to this engagement, so they got to clear their airspace to allow um, the UK, which is the mother of America, to come in. Now, what do you think is going to happen to them if they don't clear that airspace? You really think this beast was asking would show how much power this, this damn devil, these Edomites still holds in this earth? So don't believe the hype, <laughs> you know? They will. They they. It's it's a lot going on behind the scenes. After the Houthis have been firing missiles, after missiles and drones at uh, ships going by, cargo ships particularly, and recently, supposedly, they have been directly targeting uh, U.S. warships. Now, some people are asking the question: Does President Biden have the authority to go and start attacking another nation? And with the 2001 force authorization. Uh, the United States president is allowed to re respond uh, to to countries that have attacked U.S. troops and U.S. warships. And that, uh, you know, that's why it becomes so important that the missiles recently were actually targeting U.S. warships. Now, the United States has been on board in other words, attacking. Yet in other words, this beast. Right. Basically forced himself into this war. They see they're setting themselves up. And this is how the Lord say, and I think it's Psalms 37, the Lord has put him in slippery slopes. Because behind the scenes, these elites, they think they got their hand on the pulse, not knowing we're in a time of serious prophecy. This is thing is going to break out into the war of Armageddon. So this thing is going to slip out of their hands. Men with bombing with a bombing campaign for quite a while, but uh, up till now, they've basically been alone. Uh, no one wanted to join the United States in that, and therefore it would look like just the United States going after somebody. So they needed a at least another country to be on board with this. And so the UK dragging its heels for days and days and days, even weeks, until they finally gave authorization last night. And that kind of gave the green light to the United States, apparently. To conduct this attack now like i've said saudi arabia and its coalition allies have been bombing yemen for eight years 
the United States have been pushing for them to uh, come to a peace treaty, come to a peace terms, and they finally did. And then the Houthis uh, trying to uh, uh, protect the uh, Gaza people uh, declared war on Israel. Well, now it has become a little more sticky because Yemen has now declared war on the UK and and the United States. So Saying we in. So we United in. States Basically, we in. This is what they want. See, they're trying to clear the board. Because remember, this is a new world order. The old order must decease. The old way of doing business, paper currency, out. So they're going to need war. They're trying to bring in this new order with war. This is their old philosophy, the phoenix rising from the ashes. But you're going to need ashes. You're going to need this confusion. You're going to need to shake this place up. And you got to remember, the Lord is controlling the minds of these kings. So let's check this out, right? <clears throat> when you look at, matter of fact, let me let me read this here. This is uh, this is Matthew's, Matthew twenty four verse one. Let's start from verse one. As Yahushua, because his name is not Jesus, there's no J in Hebrew. Our Lord spoke Hebrew, not Latin, not Greek, not definitely not English, not Spanish. He spoke. Hebrew. So how do you say Savior or the Deliverer in Hebrew? Yah, Hawasha. Same as Joshua. Same as Hosea. Okay, let's get that out. So as Yahawasha was leaving the temple grounds, his disciples pointed out to him the various temple buildings. But he responded, do you see all these buildings? I tell you the truth. They will be completely demolished. Not one stone left on top of another. So this happened in, in 70 AD, those seven weeks you read about in Daniel. Okay, this was, this was the siege. So Yahweh was going into prophecy, immediate prophecy that was going to happen um, a few decades after he departed, but then he was also going into future, future prophecies that's going to happen hundreds of years in the future. And we know this by the, the next few verses. It says, it says, um, I read two, three. It says, later, Yahweh sat on the Mount of Olives. This was the actual Mount full of olives. It was the very famous Mount. His disciples came to him privately and said, tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return? That's the key right there. So the disciples understand it was opened up. They knew that the Lord had to go and that he will return. But see, they think in short term. I mean, as expected. You know, they wasn't fully hit with the uh, understanding at this time. You know, this is a good question. You know, they thinking the Romans are going to fall because that was in, they were in position at this time. But not knowing that return, that return was going into the future. Hundreds of years. We're 2,000 years removed from when our Lord rose from the dead. And ascend it up in the cloud that you read about in Acts, the first chapter. Them not knowing this was thinking, and they was they was living in the moment, so to say. Okay, but they knew a return, a return, a coming back had to happen. Okay, so they said, What are the signs we looking for? What are the signs we looking for right now? <laughs> right? It says. And the end of the world. Now, this wasn't talking about the world in a orca many sense. Because when you go into Ecclesiastes, the first chapter tell you the rock itself, the earth, right, goes nowhere. The Lord just going to remove rulership. So this word world was going into eon, an age. And like I said before, the disciples were, were, were uh, referring or hinting back to the Romans who had an age and their age went. 
Then came the dark ages. Then came the renaissance. They didn't know at that time about uh, a, a falling away. The spirit didn't open them up to that. So they speaking in the current, but watch how Yahusha flips this on them. Yahusha told them, don't let anyone mislead you. And when they received that full blast of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, the second chapter, the Holy Spirit is going, it's going to give you discernment and guide you like it's doing us. So you can't deceive the elect. You can't, you can't do that. If you of the elect and you predestined to be saved, nothing will remove you. Not even this Project Blue Bean. Because you can take this as them hinting to them uh, perpetrating a false second coming. Because that's in the mix. I mean, it's speculation right now. But that's in the mix. That's possible that they're going to use their technology to, to pull off one of the greatest frauds on planet Earth. Because this man is, is a liar. Okay, but we're going to wait and see. So it said, let no one mislead you. For many will come in my name, which is happening, claiming I am the Messiah or the Hamashiach, which is the anointed. They will deceive many and many are going to follow. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars. Now, yeah, there were wars back then. But there are more wars now on a higher level. Why? Because of the technology. The technology, the understanding, knowledge shall be increased. Then use 12. So the wars now can't be compared to the wars back then. Because you can you can move, you can you can wage war on so many levels when you add in computers. That's why when you go into um Isaiah 9 and 5, it tell you about the condition of the old battles. Versus the new battles, meaning that this one will be with fuel. They got all kind of oil involved with this, gasoline, electricity, lasers. So war is on a whole nother level. And remember, the return wasn't talking about those ancient wars. The return was going into the future, future wars. That's the hit. The return for the future. 2000 something it could be 2024 we in we may tip into the beginning of 2025 but we know it's near based on the signs so he says and you will hear of wars and threats of wars but don't panic yes these things must take place but the end won't follow immediately why because like, like, you know, the Lord ain't going to deliver us tomorrow just because America and UK attack, you know, the Middle East or what they call the Middle East, which uh, the uh, the Malcoma brings it out so beautifully. You know, it's West Asia. You know. Israel sits on the continent of Asia. That's West Asia. The Middle East was made up. So just because you see. America and the UK just jumped on their ass. Don't mean it's going to happen. Why? Because we got Jacob's trouble. <laughs> and it's the hopeful year. We got the MOTB, which is going to really unwrap that Jacob's trouble. We got city against city, nation against nation. You got a, you got a lot of other in the side pocket prophecies that got to pop off. So, yes, this is an exciting time. But you hold your horses and you remain in your patience and your patience possess your souls. It says, nation will go to war against nation, right? Hold on, let me read that again. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes. This year started off with a 7.5 in Japan. Serious. And many, in many parts of the world. So let's, let's, let's look at, how many wars are being fought right now in the world when you go to Google? Now, you can see this here, right? This is a map. You can see the color codes. These are the, you know, certain wars that's being fought. You know, you base it on the color. Now, when you go into, let me just open this up a little bit. When you see Israel is right here. See that right there? 
That's Saudi Arabia I just clicked on. And they're fighting right up over there. But all this belongs to us. That whole thing right here. This is the land barren and desert that all the nations are going to gather to. Now, what the Lord just activated, most likely, is the gathering of the Valley of Jehoshaphat, uh, Armageddon. Right? God won. Harma God won. The gathering of the valleys of troops on the hill. And all nations are going to flood down into the land barren and desert down here. So the, a lot of wars is about to take place. And this is the lease of the flock. As you see right there, it's the Gaza Strip. It's going to draw all nations down here for the final war. That's why what's going on is very important. And it's, and it's beautiful because the spirit jumped on apostle. And he coined this year. The, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble because Jacob's trouble means Esau's trouble, Ammon's trouble. Everybody's in trouble. Now, look at, look at this here. Now, these are all the countries that's at war. You got Ukraine, Palestine, Sudan, Nigeria. Look at that. Look at this. So the Lord was speaking of these wars. Israel, Iraq. Look, the Lord was speaking of these wars. And these wars are done on a futuristic level. You got to remember, wars are not fought the same so these countries here are heavily developed with the education system, right? They got scientists, nuclear scientists. They got all kinds of strategies, motherboards, helicopters, airplanes, space stations. So these wars were on a whole nother level. But I'm going to bring your attention to here. Look at Ukraine. Ukraine been going against Russia or I would say Russia has been slaughtering Ukraine for the past two years. And this is a this is this is a high number of estimated casualties in 2023. The minimum they they saying let's say that's rounded off to 30,000. But look at Palestine. They damn near 20,000, man. So they right so what's popping off in the Middle East is going to surpass this, man. And these are just more numbers as they keep going, going back, you know. But it, these, these, these are the wars that our Lord spoke of when he said, you, you should hear these wars in nation against nations upon his return. The Lord is returning and the Lord is returning real soon. Once again, nation will go to war against nation. Look at all those wars and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, which is a shortage of food that's here, and earthquakes. Like I said, this year started off with a major earthquake. But now check these earthquakes out, man. This right here, this is this is today. Around 5 22 p.m. The 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 Tonga Islands region, 5.2. I mean, look at this. Look at this. This is this 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 is just a, a few days. This goes back to January seventh. Let's go a little lower to the four point five point oh. Look at this. Look at all these earthquakes, man. This is my earthquake app. I got paid close attention to this. These are all the earthquakes, man. That's been happening just this week alone. Look at this. <laughs> So our Lord is it's it's making great statements right now. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. And as you can see, this is all over the world. So our Lord, man, the return is in. And for you guys, you're on the fence thinking this thing ain't going to happen. You know, you think we just reading empty prophecies? You're fooling yourself. And you're going to be caught up in the middle of this, man. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekha Shalom.